Mm. Sun kissed. What's up guys, it's Lord Saint and we're back again with another video. Today I'm going to show you two plants that are, are kind of going through some type of rehab. It's a continuous thing. If you're not checking on your plants, I know I joke about <laughs> everybody puts a video up or a reel or they joke about uh, checking their plants 20,000 times a day and uh, it's absolutely accurate. Now I may not actually check my plants 20 times a day, but I am checking them every day, especially the plants that I've just recently repotted into a newer mix to make them grow a little bit better because I need to make sure that that mix is exactly what the plant wants. Now, what I have experienced and what I'm sure a lot of us experience with Anthurium, uh, whether it's your first time or you know, you're somewhat in your, in your intermediate phase, is that once you acquire so many and you start just throwing things, some Anthurium respond to the potting mixes a little bit differently. Now, last week we spoke about what I use in my potting mix, but I did go shopping today. I went to Green Barn Orchid Supplies, and that's over here in Del Rey. I will drop the info down for Green Barn Orchid Supplies. Great, wonderful owner. She is very knowledgeable, and you guys ask me where I get these clear, um, or transparent pots from that's where I get them from also I just found out she has this style which is great for your well if you have anthurium this large congratulations you, you are them uh, but <laughs> they have this and larger this is actually the smallest one that comes in three sizes as I as I've learned today but they have this which is very good for the air right for, for your aeroids or anthurium but that's where I get those. Um, so let's just start real quick by just telling you, I know I said, I think I mentioned last video, I was looking for a more fine bark and I found it in a rather larger bag. As you can see here, I haven't cracked it open yet, but I did buy an even finer uh, <laughs> bark. And I was looking for this mainly for the anthuriums. This one would be a good size for the juvenile anthuriums that I have. When I'm growing those from a very juvenile stage, this is the finer one. And then obviously this one is just a little, little bit bigger for my larger anthurium. I've been looking for bark and I know I told you guys on the last video, I've had uh, to go to just like the local hardware store and get an orchid mix. Now I do wanna add, she has pumice. I don't know about you guys, but I found it, I have found it impossible to find pumice down here in South Florida, but now I know she has. So I'm going to be ordering pumice all the time. I have read and I've seen a lot of growers use pumice in their mixes just for the aeration. And then uh, of course I bought a bag of charcoal. It's your normal charcoal there. So those are the ingredients that I'm going to use. I have had to go chunkier on my mixes and I've noticed it in repotting uh, a few of my anthurium. Some of them have started to do some funky things and I've noticed it in the foliage, whether that be getting spots or some edging issues. And I can immediately tell that the plant isn't necessarily thriving in the new mix that I've given it. So I have to go around and repot again, but I'm gonna show you a plant that should be just giant by this point and i'm going to explain to you why it isn't this is an anthurium crystallinum and it is probably one of the first anthurium in my collection now you're going to understand my disappointment not in this plant but in just not noticing things with this plant when i tell you i got this plant easily three or four years ago easily three or four years ago and it's actually in two now because yesterday when i finally got around to it it had another offshoot equal size and I separated them and I finally went around to giving it a very, very chunky mix. So the issue that I had with this crystallinum was the mix it, that it was, it wasn't chunky enough. And I was in, in essence drowning this plant and I knew this is what was happening. It's because when I finally pulled it out of the giant pot that it was in, it was a lot of root rot. Now to me, that is a immediate sign that I messed up in the uh, potting medium selection process of these plants. And I said it in the last video, I'm starting to realize a lot of my anthurium or anthurium in general 
really don't like to be bogged down in their mix. They really like to be in an airy mix. And the way you get that is with, or the way that I get that is with bark. Uh, like I said, I use the cocoa chips. I use size three perlite. And now I'm using different size bark. I'm sticking with my charcoal and then I'll, it, I'll even be adding pumice into that mix. But this plant should easily be, I can't tell you, should be a, a phenomenon of a plant, but I took so long in noticing. And it's not that I didn't know, it was just life. And I, I've known for some time that I've needed to repot it. But f like I said, I finally got around to it and I, I, it wasn't good. There was a lot of root rot. So I'm seeing that with a lot of my anthurium. And I'll show you another. And it goes to say that um, with these clear, whoop, with these clear pots, this is why I love them so much because I can keep an eye on the roots. But I also start to notice when I start to get these funky leaves and I'm starting to get some crisping or, or you know, soggy leaves towards the bottom of foliage. You can see there. Now you can see the foliage isn't growing maybe in the shape that it should. I, that's telling me that there's a problem. Uh, you can almost immediately tell when you repot a plant or when you get a plant and if it's doing something funky, you can immediately, or that should be an immediate sign that, hey, something's wrong. You maybe have to change up the mix. Another sign for me that something's wrong with this plant is normally I have vibrant, healthy roots that start growing towards the top because I normally put cocoa chips at the top to foster more of the protruding roots or the, the roots that are starting to pop to start to go back down and, and give me, you know, new growth points. But I can immediately tell because these are n not as healthy as I normally see them. They're not green. They're brownish. It uh, looks like they're starting to decline. So I most definitely probably have some type of rot issue with this plant. So you should really be checking your plants, especially when you repot them. I, I mean, if you're like me, I check my plants. I do a walk around and I kind of just take a peek at things every day, but at least weekly you should be checking. And it's important that you check also for pests. So weekly, I'm um, walking around, I'm spraying with inse insecticidal soap. I think a few months ago, I ended up having some type of spider mite infestation on a lot of my plants. And it's because I was, again, busy with life and I wasn't checking on my plants uh, as often as I normally would or just doing um, weekly maintenance. So when I finally got around to them in my cabinet out here, I found a lot of spider mite and the foliage obviously portrayed a lot of spider mite damage. So when I finally got to rectifying the situation, there's a lot of foliage that I had to cut off and then, you know, it's a lot of, all right, let's, let's get on the rebound with this. So you should be checking your plants uh, weekly minimum. So this is getting a repot today. That chrysalinum just got, uh, repot yesterday and like I said I got an offshoot of it so now I have two of that chrysalinum and hopefully now that uh, I've seen it and I'll bring this close so you guys can see that's what it looks like I can see the roots in there and I know the roots um, should have plenty of room to breathe and when I watered it, I, I deep watered this plant yesterday as I do with all of the plants that I freshly repot. And today already I can see, uh, you know, just some condensation on the inside, which to me is a good sign. That means there's, there's space between the, the, the mix there. So I'm seeing some condensation, the plant looks fine. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to tell in one day, but to me, this is a good sign where I can see and I'm looking at that, all right, this should be good. Uh, there's good airflow. I'll monitor it for the next two weeks and I should see some type of positive growth in this. Now, if the leaf starts to yellow or just really starts to decline, then I've got another problem. I probably have to take it out and, and figure something else out. But that's, I just wanted to touch on that uh, today because I, I feel like uh, we run into a lot of problems with our plants and a lot of times it's too late. Now I can show you some, I have like easily seven or eight smaller anthurium that I've had to repot strictly in perlite. And that's because they were just too far gone. I had to literally cut all the mush. Uh, the root system was just shot and all I was left with is chunk and maybe one leaf. I would 
recommend that you even chop the leaf and just start with chunk and see if you can get a new growth point. But what I do, and you can tell me if it works for you down below, is I pot them straight back into some perlite. I do the chunk. I dip the chunk in some, some root hormone, and then I put it straight into some perlite all around, and then I have a cup or some type of container that can retain water that doesn't have any holes in it, and I put my now potted, uh, here, I'll show you. Maybe it's easier if I show you. All right, here's a good example. So this is a Fort Sherman, and I was pretty much, I lost it, and I repotted it into perlite, and I put that perlite into a cup. You see here? So here it is, just in perlite, and then I put that into water, not all the way to the top. I just poured some water in this. I probably have to empty it a little bit, but I, I left it so that there's a little catch of water inside of the container that it sits in, and I just leave that just like that. And you can see that it's made its rebound. I can actually see the roots growing in that smaller cup through the perlite, and then I have a new leaf. This one was a new leaf, and then I have a newer leaf that's emerging. So I know uh, that I'm successful in saving this plant. So every time I start losing a plant and I cut it right back to chunk, this is, I go straight back to perlite. This is the go-to. Um, now, you would argue that, hey, when they're this small, isn't it a good idea to just start in perlite? And you wouldn't be wrong, just that the germination process of a lot of seedlings is very slow or so that I've found and just perlite. I normally have to start in some type of moss mixed with perlite or, or cocoa peat uh, mixed with perlite, some type of other mix to, to get that vigorous growth from seed. And then normally they're fine, but if I run into any issues, this is what I do. It's, it's that simple. This is like a, what, what ounce cup is this? I don't know, like a seven ounce? Oh, sorry. This is a 12 ounce cup. And then there's a smaller cup inside of it with the plant in it. So that's all I do. It's a simple way to bring back your plants. It's worth a try if you haven't tried it just yet. But with all that said, just it's important just to pay attention to the plants that you get. I can't tell you it's, it's devastating. I have a lot of plants right now that I'm trying to bring back that I'm like, please, 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 please. Because they're uh, some very uh, high-end anthuriums, at least on my list, and my list is very, you know, small and low, but they're anthurium that are important to me, but in some way, shape, or form, I've just been unsuccessful in growing them properly, and now I'm trying to get the rebound with new knowledge that we always gain every day with every plant that we grow, and this is where I'm at. So, chunky is better. I've said this before. Uh, I'm starting to learn. It's just treat them like orchids. Now, I'm not saying just drop it directly into just a pot of bark, but get damn close to that. Uh, I, they, they really like their air, and they don't like to be bogged down in water from what I'm realizing. So I'm starting to definitely, I've been staying away from heavy, you know, I don't use any soil, anything heavy moss I stay away from. Now it's starting to be the, like I said, cocoa chunks. I'll add some of this pumice that I have here and then I have finer bark that I'm using and that's gonna be majority of my mix there. That's all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to briefly talk about that. So thank you for joining me again. I am going to drop the next video, which is gonna be in a, another introduction, three more anthurium from my collection. So look out for that one. I'll be making that for next week. Thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, drop a comment below, like the video, share it with your friends. It's Lord Saint. Thanks for joining me for another one. Talk to you on the next.